I heard an interview many years ago with Chris Lord Algae, and, and he was asked a question about sub frequencies. How does he get that big low end? And his answer was, I just ignore those frequencies. They kind of take care of themselves if I get everything else right. What? Years later though, I started to get it. The, the mid range really is everything in the mix. The problem is most people spend 80% of their mixing time and energy focusing on not the mid range, you know, the extreme low end sub frequencies or the extreme top end airy frequencies. And when you do that, what happens is your mix sounds bad everywhere outside of your studio and it doesn't translate. I once had that same problem too. I would spend hours trying to get the exact right amount of that low end sub thump and rumble. I used to have low end frequencies like building up in the back of my room. So I would go and sit back there and try to mix until it felt right. And I'd work on that until it sounded really big in the studio. But then as soon as I took it out into my car, it inevitably sounded really weak, it sounded like there was a big hole in the middle of my mix and there was absolutely no power in the low end. At the same time, I had the classic habit of newbie mixers. I mixed in solo. So that means I cut a lot of the low mids and I boosted a lot of the high end because it always sounds great in solo. So if you had to draw the frequency curve of my mixes, it would look something like this. The extreme ends really hyped and the mid range totally neglected or cut out. And then I got NS10s, all of a sudden, all the low end sub frequencies were gone and that nice pleasing high end air and sheen was also gone. All I could hear was this raw, unpolished, blatant mid range right up in my face. And at first I hated it, but very quickly my mixes started translating like never before. And they actually started sounding bigger outside my studio than in the studio. Why? Why did this happen? Well, since I couldn't hear those sub frequencies anymore, I stopped obsessing over them. I was forced to focus on about 150 Hertz to eight or 10 K. And if I could hear the bass guitar and it sounded nice and full on my NS 10s, then it was definitely going to sound nice and full outside of the studio. And we get fooled into thinking the low end power in our mix lives down in the sub frequencies, but it doesn't. It comes from the low mids. Now these days I literally spend about three minutes when I'm mixing, checking the sub low end. I just pop on headphones, reference with a couple other tracks and make sure that I don't have too little or too much low end. Same thing with the highs too. You know, I used to boost a lot of 12K and 14K all over the place in the mix, just wacky stuff like that. But now I don't, I rarely boost anything above 8K because these speakers just don't give me the satisfaction when I do that. Plus that crazy top end doesn't really matter that much. Where you really want to nail it in the upper end is between 1K and about 5K. To me, those are the frequencies that determine what is up front and what has energy in the mix. You've got to be able to space out your drums, your bass, your guitars, your vocals, and all the other layers within that little pocket in the mid range. Now that doesn't mean that you carve out certain areas for each instrument. There is definitely going to be a lot of overlap, but managing this critical mid range and getting everything to glue or certain things to stand out in the mix the way you want without sounding over really harsh is absolutely crucial. And when I stopped boosting instruments around four or 5K all the time, like I used to, and instead started trying to boost instruments around one to 2K, I started having better translation and my mix sounded like it had more energy. Think about the speaker built into your iPhone. You know, you wanna be able to play your mix through this thing and hear the kick drum, hear all the synth layers, hear the bass guitar, everything in your mix. Don't let fancy monitors fool you into thinking you have a great mix. This is why Chris Lord Algae also said he used to mix on a boom box that was in the back of the room. Remember the listener could be listening on anything, their car, ear pods, headphones, nice speakers at home or crappy speakers. And what's gonna vary the most from room to room and speaker to speaker is the extreme lows and the extreme highs. You could spend two hours crafting that perfect 50 Hertz punch that 75% of listeners will never hear. But the mid range, pretty much every speaker will play that. Ironically, the less you worry about the extreme highs or the extreme lows in your mix, the better they're gonna sound and the better your mix will translate. So don't make the mistake of neglecting your mid range like so many amateur mixers do. The sooner you really grasp this, the sooner your mixes will start to improve rapidly. You also wanna make sure you're not making any of the other classic newbie mixing mistakes that I talk about in this video. There's 17 of them. A lot of them relate to this idea of the mid range, especially number one and number 10. So if you wanna find out what those 17 newbie mixing mistakes are that you need to avoid, go ahead, check out this video.